disappointed by something or someone? Are you feeling low in mood, anxious, depressed, worried about illness, death, and what comes after? Are you worried about your family and your role in the family, marriage, sexual issues, violence, and the fear of war? Are you worried about money, drugs, gambling, alcohol, that may be affecting your life in a big way? Would you like to know who God is? and be filled with the Holy Ghost and be saved? Well, there is an answer. God is ready, able, and willing to help. All we have to do is ask. Ask for that help. That's all we have, is ask God for help. Humbling ourselves and asking him for help. I mean, well, the words I just spoke there applies to people that are not saved. But it can also apply to us as well. When we're, we're feeling anxious, low in mood, worried about illness and all sorts of things. You know, but God is ready and able and willing to help. And all we have to do is ask. But before we can ask God for anything, Let's look at three scriptures that that we can we should consider before we go any further. Let's go to jo let's go to um, John fourteen, please. Very important scriptures when, before we ask God for anything. So John fourteen, sorry, verse thirteen. And it says, whatsoever, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. First scripture. If we're going to ask God for anything, we must ask in Christ's name. That is the first thing. Very, very important. We ask in Christ's name, in Jesus' name. Jesus has been given the name that's above all names. And that Jesus' name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. His name is priceless, very precious. When we go on our knees, we call upon the Lord. We ask anything of God in Jesus' name. Very important. The second scripture, let's go to 1 John, please. First John chapter five, verse fourteen. First John chapter five, verse fourteen, sorry. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hear of us. And we know that he hears the we and and we know that he hears us, whatever we ask. We know that we, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So if we ask anything of God, it has to be according to God's will. Yeah? If we ask anything of God, the first, we ask in Jesus' name. The second, it has to be according to God's will. You know? That is very, very important. And let's go to Hebrews 11 for the third. Hebrews 11, verse 6, sorry. Is everybody there? Yeah. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeking very important very important without faith it's impossible to please god so we see the first scripture we ask in jesus name we ask according to his will if it's according to his will he will hear us and we do it by faith we ask god by faith that is important very important 
before when we go before the Lord. When we go on our knees and we call upon the Lord, we call in Jesus' name. You know, we know that, you know, that he loves us. We know that um, he looks after us and he cares for us. And we know that whatever our petition is, if it's according to his will, he hears. But we must ask him by faith as well. It's very important before God. Faith. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Yeah? Impossible to please him. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah 33, please. Verse 3. Go to the Old Testament. Now, let's look at some... Uh, Yeah, 33 verse 3 in Jeremiah. All right, you got it? Yeah. It says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We call upon the Lord. We call upon the Lord. And it says, I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You know, whatever our situation is, and we call upon him, we ask him to help us. He will show us great and mighty things. There's always an answer with the Lord. Always an answer. Always an answer. God is open for business, if you like. Open for business. Our God is open for business. And that's 24 7, seven days a week. Yeah? Yeah, if it's, if it's anybody seen a shop like that? <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah. Well, our God is open for business. You know, and if we call upon Him, He will answer us. If we call in faith. If we call in faith. Yeah. And when we call upon God, right? Very important. We wait for the answer. Don't we? We wait for the answer. We don't run off and think this or that. We wait for the answer. And that's what happened to some people in the world. They run off and they say, oh, God is not going to listen to me. He doesn't want to listen to me. And stuff. They don't wait for the answer. Wait for the answer. Let's go to Psalms 40. It will show us. Let's go to Psalms 40, verse 1. So many scriptures you can look at regarding waiting. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He heard my cry. I waited patiently for the Lord. If we wait for the answer, when we call upon God, we must wait for the answer. Don't let us be hasty. Don't let us jump before we hear from God. You know, and this world jumps. It doesn't wait for God. And that is the problem. It doesn't wait for the answer. You know, it doesn't wait for the answer. God is always on time. Yeah? He's always on time. He's never late. <laughs> you know, he's never late. This is the God that we serve. It's amazing the Lord shows us so much. He? he shows us so much. We just wait upon him. Listen to him. Wait upon him. We will get an answer to our prayers. We will get an answer. And if you're worried about, concerned about anything, we know that we can go upon our knees. And I would say this to anybody in the world, that are in the world. Go upon your knees. Talk to the Lord. And wait for the answer. Yeah? Very important. God will answer you. He is always on time. Okay. Let's go into the meet and greet now. Let's go into let's go to Luke eleven. 
Luke 11, verse 9. So wonderful scriptures, these are. Um, very, very famous scriptures, very well-known scriptures. So it's Luke 11, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks, of, asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then be in evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? If we ask and we wait upon the Lord, before I received the Holy Spirit, when I was calling on the Lord, you know, for the Holy Spirit, you know, I thought that would never happen. You're calling upon the Lord, you're calling upon the Lord, you know. Sometimes you get a bit anxious and a bit frustrated. Why are they could wait till they receive and I can't? You know, but that night I received the Holy Spirit. I rejoiced. I rejoiced. And we all rejoice, didn't we? We all rejoice when we receive the Holy Spirit. We receive that promise. We waited upon the Lord. We asked, and God fulfilled his promise yeah he fulfilled his promise as he promised God is a good God God is a good God let's go to Mark let's go to Mark um, Mark chapter 10 please it talks about blind Bartim Bartimae Bartimaeus I think his name is Somebody probably can pronounce a little bit better than me. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Poor blind Bartimaeus. All right, Bartimaeus. You know, it's, it's wonderful that the Lord recorded this on this account of blind Bartimaeus. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, so it's Mark 10, verse 46. Oh, gosh, I'm in Luke. Sorry, I'm in Luke. I shall find you, Mark 10. But, yeah. So it talks about blind Bartimaeus receiving his sight. And I love this, this, when I read this, and I thought, you know, how he called in on Jesus' name. It was according to God's will, and he had faith. And it says, and they came to Jericho, and he went out, went out of Jericho with his disciples. This is Jesus. And a great number of people, people, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now, he didn't know who Jesus was. He heard about Jesus. He heard about this wonderful man that was doing wonderful things, healing people. And he was a blind man, a beggar, begging man. You know, he didn't know who Jesus was, but he heard about Jesus, and Jesus was passing his way. And when he heard that that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I will think to myself, if there was 10,000 people in that crowd, if you call out to Jesus, right, you, never th you wouldn't have thought in he would hear. But Jesus hears faith he heard faith so you can be amongst many people and you don't think the Lord hears he hears he will hear you and many yeah verse 48 and many charge him that he should hold his peace saying to this man shut up but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. He heard him. 
and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garments, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He called on Jesus' name. It was according to God's will, and it was by faith. Fifth verse 52, it says, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Mm -hmm. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Praise be to God. A man that was blind, he asked of God, and God heard him. How wonderful. How wonderful. He called on Jesus' name. He cried out to Christ. It was according to God's will to heal the, and open the sight of the blind. And it was done by faith. How wonderful that is. How wonderful that is. Let's go to Matthew 8. Let's go to Matthew 8. It talks about here about a leper. Matthew 8. All right there, yeah? Okay. And when he was come down from the, the mountain, this is Jesus with three of these other disciples after they came down from the... Um, no, sorry. No, it's, the, it's just true. It's another scripture I'm referring to there. But when he came down from the from the, the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy, immediately his leprosy was cleansed how wonderful and jesus said uh, jesus said unto him see that thou thou tell no man but go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that moses commanded for a testament unto them how wonderful i mean who touches a leper who touches a leper people ran from lepers because leprosy we know it's an absolutely catastrophic disease I mean, if basically your flesh, as we all know, falls off. Terrible way to, to die. It's a horrible disease. But Jesus, Jesus touched him because the man asked. It was according to God's word and it was done by faith. He believed that Jesus could do something and it says immediately the leprosy left him. You imagine his skin. You imagine how he looked afterwards. That man went home rejoicing. He went home rejoicing. Rejoicing. Because he believed. He believed God's word. He believed Christ's word. He went home rejoicing. That man couldn't have been more happy. You can imagine if you had a catastrophic illness like that. And God took that away immediately. You remember his friends, his family rejoicing with him. What happened to you? That man, Jesus, happened to me. That man, Jesus, happened to me. That's the God. I serve. That's the God that each one of you serve. I would say to anybody on YouTube that can listen and hear what I'm saying. Our God is a living God. He does everything he said, what the can says on the can. <laughs> Not like Kupinol. <laughs> but our God Oh, man, I 
I tell you something? I'm so happy to be with the Lord. He makes my heart rejoice. <laughs> he makes a heart rejoice, doesn't he? Yeah? Come on. Yeah? yeah. Absolutely. Let's get a amen for the Lord. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. Let's let me look at the time, right? Um what's the next one? Let's go to Mark um nine, please. Mark chapter nine. Mark chapter nine, verse twenty seven. Right, Mark chapter nine. Verse No, no, no. No, sorry. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, sorry. Talks here about the demonic boy healed. Mm -hmm. So verse 14. So when he came to, to his disciples, this is after Jesus was coming down from the transfiguration. That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, I misspoke a little bit. but So verse 14, when he came down, to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioned with them. And straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? Why are you questioning my disciples? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and paineth, or wasting away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithful generation, Jesus was as annoyed at them. O faithful generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, this is Jesus asking the father of the young boy, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. So, he, you know, as a child, he was suffering for a long time. By these evil spirits, and they are evil spirits. And oftentimes they have cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Look what Jesus is saying to him that believeth. And the straightway the father cried, Child, the the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Praise be to God. The victory. The victory. He asked Christ. It was according to Christ's will. And he did it by faith. He did it by faith. His son had no other option. No one else could have helped him. This demonic spirit was tormenting the child from he was a child, a young child. But when he met Jesus, Jesus heard. He asked Jesus for help and Jesus helped. And that situation was made right. How wonderful. How wonderful. You know, imagine the, the multitude must have rejoiced. Rejoiced. 
to see the victory. God is amazing. God is amazing. Let's go to um, I think the last scripture. Let's go to John's. Let's go to John six, please. John six thirty seven. All right, okay, it says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise I will in no wise cast out. I will in no wise cast out. Very important scripture. You know, anybody that comes to Christ, that asks is of him, According to God's will, he will not cast you away. He will not cast you away. Our God is a welcoming God. Our God is open for business. You know? And that has not stopped. 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Yeah? He's there for the church. He's there for all men as well. If they open up their hearts and give them their problems. Give God your problems. Give God your difficulties. Tell him that what you're going through. Tell him, and he will make it right. Every one of us can testify to that. That's why we give our testimonies, don't we? What God has done for us. And God has rescued us from the darkness and brought us into the light. We all can testify to that, can't we? Yeah? God is a good God. God is a hearing God. And whatever we ask of him, if it's according to his will, he hears us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray that was a blessing. And, uh, you know, I will seek the Lord.